Haley Outen here at the American Digital Network studio. Thanks for tuning in to our summer football preview series. The standard is high in Greenville and East Carolina will turn to a new head coach to bring the Pirates back to championship contention in 2016. Scotty Montgomery, who helped Duke to its most successful stretch in program history, makes a short move to ECU for his first head coaching assignment and has a roster that is stacked with talented players. The Pirates, who have been searching for stability at the quarterback spot since the departure of Shane Carden in 2014, will turn to Philip Nelson to run the offense this season. Nelson started 16 games at Minnesota before transferring to ECU and looked to have full command of the offense in spring practice. Of course, it doesn't hurt when you can throw to one of the top receivers in program history, and Zay Jones should once again put up eye-popping numbers for the Pirates. Jones finished two catches shy of 100 last season and enters his senior year, ranked third in school history. Overall, the Pirates have 13 returning starters from last season, and their experience will be crucial against another strong schedule. East Carolina has a three-week stretch in September in which the Pirates will host NC State, then have back-to-back -back road games at South Carolina and Virginia Tech. And to talk more about what we can expect out of ECU this season, we have the Daily Reflector's very own Nate Summers on the line who has had a front row seat covering the Pirates. That's up next. trophy to the Memphis Tigers. This is the time, time of year you want to keep playing. And it's Flowers. This is a design draw. Got a couple of good blocks. Great to the corner. He'll get in easily. Touchdown, USF. Go. Now they go to the ground. This is Anthony Wales. Wales breaks three. Down to the 10. Five. He scores. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us here at the ADN. We're talking East Carolina football today, and we're now joined on Skype by the Daily Reflectors, Nate Summers. Nate, great to have you on the show today. For those who don't know, college football is a pretty big deal in Greenville, North Carolina. Everyone is gearing up for football season, and Nate, the Pirates have had a much different spring than in years past, now under the leadership of Scotty Montgomery. What has been the biggest difference about just his coaching style and what you've seen this spring compared to years past? Well, I think the biggest thing is just the mindset change. You know, Scotty, uh, he's all business, and that's kind of uh, how I've, I've built him in some stories, some preseason stuff that we're writing. Uh, he's a very different guy. You know, Ruffin was, um, you know, I, I hate to say more personable, but Ruffin was, was more, I think, about building relationships, walking in the door, and uh, making sure he established that he's a father figure to these guys and uh, creating a family atmos atmosphere. And, you know, all coaches, I think, use that term, family atmosphere. But Scotty Montgomery's version of a family atmosphere is, is more like, you know, I'm the really strict dad that, you know, you, you can only come at a, a certain way without getting in trouble. Um, I guess one of the best ways, and I've used this actually in some, in some stories, uh, my, my biggest uh, probably impression early on of Scotty was him getting really mad at a player that I won't name at the end of a practice because I guess, you know, the effort wasn't there. And um, Scotty ran the sprints with that player alongside him, giving him an earful the entire way back and forth, back and forth, back and forth for an entire set of sprints. Uh, never stopped once talking to the kid, was in it literally just right up in his face and his ear. Uh, running sprints alongside him. Um, you know, they do an Oklahoma drill at the end of practice that's really kind of brutal and really tough, and, you know, players are just killing each other. Um, and I think a lot of that is probably to establish how he wants things to be from here on out. I don't maybe think that it'll be that way all the time, but 
Uh, I'd say Scotty has worked on attitude and worked on just the kind of personality that he expects this team to, to exude. Yeah, and I actually had a chance to make it down to spring practice uh, this year, and you could just tell it was very high energy, very intense, the way that he ran practice. Now, last time around, or last year around this time, ECU had to deal with a season-ending injury at the quarterback position, so we saw mm -hmm. a couple different faces under center in 2015. Philip Nelson named the starter this year. He only has one year left as a Pirate, but what do you expect to see from him, and what kind of player is he? Well, he's a really dynamic passer, actually. I mean, a guy that has not spent that much time on the field and, you know, because of obvious reasons, because of his disciplinary problems at his two previous stops, uh, you know, he's a very natural throwing quarterback. He's probably a more natural passer than Bankert, uh, who, who decided to transfer after spring ball uh, and who obviously was the odds on favorite to be uh, Shane Carton's uh, semi long term replacement. Um, but, yeah, Philip Nelson comes in. If you ever were going to have a guy for a one-and-done season at quarterback, which is not ideal, um, he is probably, you know, one of your you know one of your best bets for a guy that can uh, walk in the door and uh, be ready to play. And it is a little surprising. He's made a very fast adjustment. You know, I, I hate to say it, honestly, for Philip's sake, but if he had been a four-year guy somewhere, he would be probably, a, a, you know, I don't know about a household name, but – he would have probably put up some pretty amazing numbers, I would think, pretty much anywhere he would have been. Uh, but, yeah, he's, he's a great down-the-field thrower, and, and this offense is uh, maybe not as aggressive or, or wide open as it was uh, with the previous coaching staff, but uh, they've moved Isaiah Jones, probably the top receiver, to the other outside spot with Trayvon Brown at the other side. So they have two huge uh, downfield weapons, and, and Nelson showed that, uh, and Bankard actually showed before he transferred that, both of them could throw the ball down the field and, and do it kind of the way this staff wants them to do it, which is a little bit more uh, straight down the line, on the hashes kind of throws. Um, but, yeah, uh, Philip, from what little we were able to see in the spring, uh, he has a great, uh, great throwing arm and I think a great uh, rapport with the players. And he's a different kind of guy, obviously. It's a, it is a one-and-done scenario. Uh, he's got one year to have his best year, and uh, I think he's pretty motivated by that. Yeah, and you mentioned Zay Jones, a very special playmaker for the ECU offense, and he comes with a pirate pedigree. How dangerous of a playmaker can you see him being this season, and have you had a chance to see him and Philip Nelson work together yet? Yeah, I have some. Definitely in practices have seen them, you know, throw some passing trees and that kind of stuff, and, you know, occasionally get to see that end of the practice, you know, the full-on 11-on-11 scrimmage uh, type of sequence, and those guys developed a rapport. Uh, you know, I think Bankard had developed a good rapport with them, too, uh, which, of course, creates a, a little bit of an, a, a hiccup in there um, when you think Bankard is probably going to be the guy and then things suddenly change. But uh, I think that, again, Nelson uh, is probably the most amazing thing that he has done uh, other than kind of handle all the pressure and, and having to talk a, a quite a bit about, uh, you know, his circumstances that brought him here on kind of a, a third strike. Um, you know, I, he knows who his best uh, receivers are. I, that's the way I would say it. And, Again, putting Isaiah on that outside lane, he was always a slot receiver, always a, an H-type receiver over the middle. Um, you know, the previous offense was really fueled by that slant inside, the Justin Hardy throw, if you will. Uh, you know, Isaiah was brought in to be the same kind of player as, as Justin Hardy. Uh, but this staff identified some different things. And, uh, again, I think they definitely know who their two best receivers are. Uh, Trayvon is a natural outside receiver, and uh, Isaiah has made that transition now. Um, so, yeah, I, I, again, I, I think those three guys, uh, if you want to look at a centerpiece in, in terms of the passing game, uh, Nelson's a perfect guy for that. And, and I could see Isaiah being more of a game breaker on those long throws, uh, obviously, which is something we haven't seen more of, you know, his, his big plays have been um, things over the middle where he's created a big play or where, where he's been kind of out in coverage, you know, away from coverage on a big throw over the middle. But I think we'll see it straight down the hashes more, like I said. And before we let you go, I have to ask you about the Pirates' opening schedule this season. They finished just under 500 last year, but they did pick up that rainy day win against Virginia Tech in Greenville and have had quite a bit of success against the ACC in recent years. Mm -hmm. This year is the first, or in the first four weeks, we'll see NC State and Virginia Tech and then South Carolina out of the SEC. Uh, it's mm -hmm. not going to be easy, but how do you see Coach Mo approaching these games, not only trying to get wins, but also trying to get this team ready for conference play? Yeah, you know, I think one interesting similarity, one thing that will be neat to watch and, and see how he approaches uh, is going to be that NC State game. Obviously, he has a Duke pedigree. He's a North Carolina guy. Uh, you know, similarity, obviously, to Ruff and McNeil. Um, 
and obviously Ruffin was was hugely into the in-state games as a former player. He certainly could embrace the kind of big atmosphere that um, that happens. And, you know, Scotty Montgomery has talked to us quite a bit about uh, him being here at Daddy Thicklin Stadium as a player for Duke. Um, and how surprised he was at, at the atmosphere that he ran out onto the field and saw and how intimidating it was, even though he didn't think it would be. Um, I think he's trying really hard to uh, maintain, you know, not only what he saw as a player, but what he knows has gone on here um, in the last decade. And um, it, I think it's interesting in terms of the ACC quickly that, that you know, East Carolina has had its fair share of success, as you mentioned, including against these teams. Uh, I think NC State and, and Virginia Tech have a ton of motivation to, to win those games above and beyond just getting another win, but um, to maybe reestablish themselves as, as the more dominant teams. But, uh, yeah, I think it'll be really interesting to see how Scotty can, uh, if, or if he can, um, take that momentum, that ACC momentum, and, and kind of ride with it. So those will be fun games. Well, I know Coach Mo said that he was very excited, just really anticipating that feeling of being on the sideline as a coach for the first time in Dowdy Ficklin Stadium. So we're looking forward to seeing that. All right, Nate, thanks for taking the time to give us a closer look today at East Carolina heading into the 2016 season. Looking forward to seeing what the Pirates can do, especially on offense this fall. Thanks again. Thanks for having me. The Purple and Gold will start things off at home, as we mentioned, in Dowdy Ficklin. September 3rd against Western Carolina and will remain in Greenville for week two when they welcome NC State. They'll then hit the road to Blacksburg and Columbia for games against Virginia Tech and South Carolina. For the American Digital Network, I'm Haley Outen.